Well, praise God. Get your Bibles out this morning. And if you would, go into the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. Now, I've been preaching these last few weeks, several weeks, I don't know how long, but a little while, on, out of John chapter 16. And we were talking about Jesus saying that it was expedient that He leaves and He goes to heaven so that He can send the Holy Spirit down here to earth, so He can be your comforter and your helper. And we've been talking about how that, that as, as, you know, the church world goes, it's kind of interesting because everybody's split on the Holy Spirit. They're, they're, they're saying, oh, you know, this and that and the other and whatever. And we've talked all about that for the last few weeks. And, and you know, I, I, I hope I've made a good case here uh, over the whole situation. You know, of course, I'm kind of preaching to the choir here. But uh, about that, it's ridiculous. If Jesus said that he's going to go to heaven, he wants to send the comforter, the helper, the person that's going to be with you, that's going to help you and lead you and guide you into truth, then we should want all of that. Amen? We should want everything God has and everything God wants to send. Is that true? If God is good, we want everything he's got, right? We want more of God and less of the world. Right? We want more of God and less of the devil. Hello? Somebody said, well, no, 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 don't go there. Don't go there. And so, as I've been sharing this message and, and talking about it, I just keep getting more stirred and more stirred, and I'm challenging you, because on June the 12th is going to be Pentecost Sunday. And I'm challenging you because you've got to understand something. When Jesus was resurrected, and we went through uh, this at, at, on Easter, at Passover, when Jesus came alive and he was resurrected and he walked with, the, with his disciples, it wasn't a moment. It wasn't just a flash. It wasn't a, a one time, uh, you know, uh, just at supper that night that they saw Jesus. Jesus was here for 40 days walking on this earth after the resurrection. And on those 40 days, he talked to his, 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 his disciples. He taught them. And the last thing or one of the most important things, I don't know if it's exactly the last thing, but the, the last words we have written that he said was that he told them to go to Jerusalem and that, that, they were, that something was going to happen. They needed, they needed something that was going to take place in Jerusalem. Well, Pentecost was something that to every Jewish person, they knew the feast because every male was, was, had to go to the temple three times a year and appear. You had to go to church three times. All right? Everybody was required. You had to go three times. It wasn't just Christmas and Easter. You had an extra one in there. All right? And it was Passover, Pentecost, and then uh, on the Day of Atonement, you had to be in church. And all three times, all males had to appear, and they had to go before the throne. They had to give an offering three times a year. Okay? And so, to every Jewish person, they realized that Pentecost was coming. Because after Passover, the next feast would have been Pentecost, and they knew it was coming. They knew Pentecost was coming. They knew that, that they were going to, to, to experience Pentecost. And what Pentecost meant to them at that time was that there was going to be, it's, it, was, it was the time that the, 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 the rains came. And the time that they, they were planting, and the time that they were, uh, it was a joyful time. It was a time that, you know, like, like they had worked hard and they got the seed in the ground and the rains came and, and it was like, okay, we can sit back and get ready for the harvest. Right? It was a good time. And so, come Pentecost Sunday, they went to church because that's what they did on Pentecost Sunday. Right? And so they went to church and they were just expecting... Pentecost Sunday service. You know, I, I grew up in a denominational church that, you know, I, I, I had it. At, I, was, I'm a, I was a smart young man. I had it figured out. That on the days and the services are going to be short because there was going to be a certain thing. You know, communion Sundays are always a short Sunday. Um, 
I knew that, you know, when, when they had different seasons of the year with the church service going to be one way or the other, you know, and I, I planned my events because all I was trying to do was hurry up and get out of church because the only reason why I was there because my parents told me I had to be. Now, heaven help us if that ever happens around here. But anyway. So then there was light. Actually, I'll just stop right now and do a commercial. <laughs> okay, we, we've been playing with filming, and uh, now we're getting real serious, and now it's actually up on YouTube. If you go onto YouTube, you type in Robert Richards, or you type in Waterhole for the World, uh, our YouTube channel will come up, and we're starting to, to, to put it out on, on the, the Sunday mornings. Jake is editing them, putting them up, and getting them out there. Uh, he's done a bunch of things. There's like rolling scriptures over here as I'm preaching and all kinds of cool things. You, can't you see them right here? Uh, and so things are a little different. We're going through kind of a weird phase right now, trying to learn to deal with that and uh, different things. But anyway, we're doing it because we've, we're finding out that there's between 800 to 1,000 people per month going to our website, to our media site, and downloading the Sunday morning message. And Wednesday services, too. And, and so there's like another whole church that's out there that, you know, that we don't know anything about. So they finally talked me into because I didn't, I, I have a really good face for radio. <laughs> and so they have finally pushed me and prodded me and I felt the, the Spirit of God poking me. And so finally we agreed to submit to, to uh, do some video. It's just going over the website. So what will happen is, is that you can actually, either you can do it one of two ways. You can go on to the, your computer and you can go to, to YouTube and you can go directly to the YouTube channel and see the, 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 the video there. Or it's going to be directly linked to our website. And we're, we haven't quite got there this next week. We'll accomplish that. But it'll be directly, you just go to the website and pull up the waterhole.net and then go in there, and you can see the whole thing, too, from there. So, anyway, we're going to see what happens. We're going to see a, put a counter on there. It's really interesting because we get a lot of hits from a lot of crazy places. I, I don't think it's crazy when I get hits from, from Central and South America or Africa or Russia because I've been in those places. But we're getting hits from the Middle East and all of the different places. And so, uh, really interesting. So, you know, praise God. China, having some hits from China. So, uh we're going to see what happens with it. So it's about getting people saved. Amen? Amen? All right. Now that I did the commercial, let's go back here to Luke chapter 24. So Jesus is speaking here, and he's talking to him, And he says in, in, in verse 49, Luke 24, 49, Behold, I send the promise of the, my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Now, when Jesus said that to the Jewish disciples, they knew exactly what he was talking about. Because the promise was of God, you can go find it in, in the book of Ezekiel, in the book of Isaiah, where he talked about that his spirit was going to come on man. And God was going to take the stony heart out of man. He's going to put a new heart within him. And he was going to put his spirit upon him, and the spirit of God was going to dwell with man. Because always in the Old Testament, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, only came upon the kings and the priests and the prophets, and it only came upon them temporarily. It only came upon the king for that moment of wisdom or that prophet for him to prophesy or something of that nature. It wasn't dwelling, the indwelling of the Spirit of God like you now are the temple of the living God because you've been born again by the blood of Jesus. It was a completely different event. The Holy Spirit would just come upon him and God's promise always was, is I'm going to put my Spirit upon you. Now, forever the Jewish... People had been raised up and they always would be told this. Fathers would tell their sons, sons would tell their sons, and it would get carried on that someday there's going to be a change. And God's going to put His Spirit in us. And He's going to dwell in us. And they always waited for that day. So now Jesus says, I'm going to go. And I'm going to go to my Father and I'm going to send the promise of the Father. Everybody say the promise of the Father. It was the promise of the Father to send His Spirit because God wants to be with you. Listen to me. The world tries to portray it that you're so bad, God doesn't want to be with you. I want to tell you something. No matter how bad you are, God wants to be with you. 
God wants to dwell with you. He wants to be in you. He's not forsaking you. The Bible says that you can go to the highest heights or the lowest depths of hell and God's spirit's still there. God loves mankind. God wants to be with mankind no matter how bad they are. Now, he's grieved at what we do. Right? He doesn't, he doesn't want us to walk in those ways. He doesn't want us to walk in the ways that are going to hurt us and take him away from him. Right? He wants to be with us. He wants to fellowship with us. And so Jesus said, I'm going to go send the promise of the Father upon you. And it's going to come upon you. Well, they're like, okay. And they said, well, just go, go tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Now, everybody say endued. That's not a word we use a lot. Right? You don't say, wife, do me with my breakfast. You get slapped, you say something like that, right? It's just not a word. Now, endow, we, we do maybe use the word endow or endowments. We, we hear that word more than endo. The difference between endow and endo is not much other than the spelling. But if you go look it up and you research it, an endowment is something that's freely given, something that, you know, like, like it's can be a monetary, an endowment can be monetary, right? And money is transferred. But an endowment's a little bit different. An endowment in the actual word means to, it means to be vested or to be clothed or to have it actually come upon you. It's like taking a jacket and holding it for someone to put on. And they put it on and then they, you, you fix it for them and you... Make sure everything's straight and you brush down the shoulders and that person got endued with that jacket. They got clothed with that jacket. They got, they got, it got put on. That's what the word endued means. Now think about this. Jesus said, go tarry in Jerusalem, stay in Jerusalem until you be empowered or sat upon or invested with power. Now I don't know about you church, but I need power. Think about it. I need power. I need power to resist temptation. Do you? Have any of you just wanted to punch somebody this last week? Hello, cowboys. Come on now. Yeah? You need an endowment from on high. Say, Lord, help me, Jesus. Don't let me do what I'm thinking about doing. Right? Right? See, it's not power like, like the movies want to take power and have fire shoot out at your fingers and, you know. No, no, no. It's power to live. Power to, to, to have the strength and the determination. Power to do what's right. Power to walk in the vision that God has for your life. Power to do what's right when you want to do what's wrong. Hello? Hello? 